Welcome back to the third episode on the series tagged Top 100 Chemistry Calculation Questions. Now you can see from this question, which is question 11, it says 117.0 grams of NaCl was dissolved in 100 cm cube of distilled water at 25 degrees Celsius. Determine the solubility in moles per dm cube of NaCl at that temperature. And what is that temperature? It is simply 25 degrees Celsius. So first of all, we have to know where this question is actually coming from. Now, from the look of things, they're asking us to get solubility in moles per dm cube. Solubility in moles per dm cube. Now, it must be noted that solubility as a word can be expressed in various SI units. And one of them is calculating solubility in moles per dm cube. So how do we calculate? That will be the question. How do we calculate solubility in moles per dm cube it is very very easy there's a very important formula that we must take note of now it is simply solubility in moles per dm cube is equal to mass in grams times a thousand over molar mass times volume now it must be noted that since i've added 1000 to the formula the volume si unit should be in cm cube this must be noted but let's say we are to still solve solubility in most per dm cube because this formula can be expressed in two cases so it becomes mass times one or we just say mass over molar mass times volume now whenever we do this our our volume should be in dm cube this must be noted so for instance the volume is in cm cube i simply add 1000 to the formula but if the volume is in dm cube i remove 1000 from the formula so let's apply all of this into the question now in the look of things the volume in the question was in cm cube so i'm um, to add 1000 to the formula it is very very straightforward it is not because the volume in the question is now 1000 that makes it here to be 1000 no here can be any value at all but it's just a coincidence that this value was still the volume down here so this must be noted whenever your volume is in cm cube add 1000 to the formula so if here was like 460 cm cube we are still to add 1000 to the formula so how do we solve this question it is very very easy so in the look of things this is the formula the most appropriate formula to use to solve this question now let's bring out our parameters now from the look of things what is the mass the mass is simply one one seven point zero grams okay that is the mass now what is the molar mass of the compound now the compound in the question is um n a c l so this is the compound n a c l so how do we get the molar mass of this compound it is very very easy what is the atomic mass of sodium it is 23 plus what is the atomic mass of chlorine it is 35.5 so when we hit our calculator the molar mass we get becomes 58.5 grams per mole now this is the molar mass of the compound which is nacl lastly what is the volume given the question the volume is simply 100 sorry 1000 cm cube so you can see that we brought all the parameters down let's quickly solve the solubility of this particular salt in moles per dm cube as stated by the question it is very very easy what is the mass it is 117 okay grams so let's write that times uh, 1000 which must be added to from formula because the volume in the question was in cm cube so we add 1000 for so for instance the volume is in dm cube we remove 1000 so over uh molar mass of the compound which is um 58.5 grams per mole times a thousand which is for the volume so what becomes solubility of this salt solubility of this salt when we hit our calculator we simply get it to be 1000 cancel 1000 so when we do this we are having two 
moles per dm cube. So what becomes the answer? It is simply option B. So you can see how questions like this have been solved without stress. So let's quickly move over to the next question. Now let's get into the next question, which is question 12. Now it says, if the solubility of KHCO3 is 0 0.4 moles per dm cube at room temperature, now it must be noted that room temperature is basically 25 degrees Celsius. Calculate the mass of KHCO3 in 100 cm cube of the solution. It is a very, very easy question. Now, if the solubility of this compound is this, so they gave us the solubility of this compound in moles per dm cube. So they gave us solubility in moles per dm cube was given in the question. So what is the value? 0 0.4 moles per dm cube. And from the look of things, they are asking us to get mass. It is a very, very easy question. It is like the question we just solved previously. So how do we solve this question? Now, we solve it without stress. Now, just watch. I recall my formula, which is solubility in moles per dm cube is equal to mass times 1,000 over molar mass times volume in cm cube this must be noted whenever the volume in the question is given to be in cm cube we add 1000 so if here was in dm cube we remove 1000 very very easy now in the look of things what are they asking us to get they're asking us to get mass i'll make it subject so when i make mass subject what are we having it becomes solubility in moles per dm cube times molar mass times volume in cm cube over a thousand well make it subject so what becomes mass in the question what is the solubility given the question it is 0 0.4 moles per dm cube times what is the molar mass they gave us straightforward the molar mass of this compound is 100 grams per mole okay and um, times the volume the volume in the question is still 100 cm cube and that's a coincidence okay because the molar mass of this compound is 100 grams per mole and same applies to the volume 100 cm cube okay over uh what is sorry over 1000 so what becomes the mass in this question when we hit our calculator we get the mass of this um solution to be four grams okay the answer basically goes to option a so that is how it is solved so let's quickly move over to the next question which is question 13 now let's get into the next question now the next question says the mass of potassium hydroxide required to make 300 cm cube of 0 0.4 mole per dm cube solution is the molar mass of koh was given which is potassium hydroxide so from the look of things they are asking us to get mass and this question is still on the concept which is solubility so how do we get it i simply write the formula don't forget the formula it is simply solubility in moles per dm cube is equal to um mass times a thousand over molar mass don't ever forget the formula it's very very important times volume in cm cube now you can see i'm adding uh, one thousand to the formula because the volume given the question was in cm cube so this is the volume whereby this is the solubility okay this must be noted this is solubility in most per dm cube and from look of things they are asking us to get mass we simply make mass subject so we're having solubility in most per dm cube times molar mass times volume in cm cube over a thousand when i make it subject so when we press a calculator mass becomes what is the solubility 0 0.4 moles per dm cube times what is the molar mass was given 56 times volume which is 300 over what is over 1000 do so what becomes the mass when we hit the calculator we are having 6.72 grams so option c becomes the answer so this is how questions like this are being tackled without stress so let's quickly move over to the next question which is question 14 and that question you will be the one solving it and you prepare the answer in the comment section below whereby the uh question 15 i'll be the one solving it so move over to the next episode
Now, this is the question you'll be solving. I provide the answer in the comment section below. It is very, very easy. Now, from the look of things, they are asking us to get the solubility of the compound. So, we actually need to use the formula. But most importantly, you have to solve for the molar mass of this compound very correctly. Now, the compound is this. PB into bracket NO3 close bracket 2. Now, my advice here is to basically bring this compound to its low, lowest form or the most simplest form. So, it means that 2 here affects everything inside the bracket. So, I'm having PB into bracket. Sorry, we we'll remove the bracket because we want to expand or remove the bracket. So, it becomes PB N2. Okay, 2 is affecting N and O6 because 2 is affecting 3 and 3 is for oxygen. So 2 times 3, that is 6. So it is best for you to bring this compound in this direction so you can be able to get, get molar mass of this compound without stress. Okay, it is very, very easy. The atomic masses of them we are given 207, which is for lead, PB, 14, which is for nitrogen, N, and 16, which is for oxygen, O. So you can solve it and provide the answer in the comment section below. All of these are very, very easy questions. So let's quickly move over to the last question on this episode. So if you find this video helpful, do have to click the subscribe button and also share these videos with your friends. Now let's quickly go ahead and solve this question without stress. The question says, what is the empirical formula of glucose? Now it must be noted that glucose is a sugar, specifically a carbohydrate. This is where glucose belongs to. And carbohydrates, which are sugars, we have various classes. Okay, when it comes to the number of carbons they have, we have um, three carbon sugars, we have four carbon sugars, we have five carbon sugar, we have six carbon sugar, and we have seven carbon sugar. This must be noted. We have three carbon sugar, we have four carbon sugar, we have five carbon sugar, we have six carbon sugar, and we have seven carbon sugar. Okay, the numbers of sugar actually starts from three carbon sugar, like likes of um, glyceridehyde and dihydroxyacetone. But I'm not talking about this in this video. Now, I'm focused on just glucose. It must be noted that glucose is a six carbon sugar. This must be noted. Glucose is a six carbon sugar. Now, we, glucose is a very good example of that. Not only glucose, we have likes of fructose and galactose, a lot of them. Okay, these are the major groups under the cis carbon sugar. And it must be noted that carbohydrate contain three principal elements, which is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, from the look of things, they all exist in a ratio, which is ratio 1, ratio 2, ratio 1. So now glucose, which has six carbon sugar, definitely what becomes the number of um, hydrogen atom that will be present in glucose, it becomes 12 because two times this but class six gives us 12. And lastly, anything written here should be written here. So yeah, it becomes six. So this is the chemical formula of glucose. This is the chemical formula of glucose not the empirical so for we to get the um the empirical formula of glucose we have to divide through by a particular value what is the empirical formula of a compound it is simply the simplest form a compound can exist so what have happened here is to simply divide through by six when i divide through by six i'm going to have c1 h2o1 or I simply say CH2O. So it's still coming back to its normal form. So it must be noted that the simplest form glucose can exist or the empirical form of glucose is actually this, not c 6 h 2 6 c 6 h 2 6 is simply the chemical formula of glucose, but not the empirical formula of glucose. I, I believe you find this video helpful. So if you like this video, do it to click the subscribe button and also share these videos with your friends. So let's go over to the next episode which is episode 4.